for the picture frame, go ahead and take whatever picture that you want for your project. And mine, I'm using, this is a picture that I took of a flower and a bee. And then you just put your favorite quote or whatever you want onto the picture. And I used the paint program to do that. And the quote that I chose was, the antidote for 50 enemies is one friend by Aristotle. And then you have a nice card for hanging. And this is what it looks like on the back. And this is the other card that I did. And you can see the back is a blue. The yarn I'm using is Red Heart Super Saver. And I'm going to use Gray Heather. And also Karen Simply Soft. For the border of the frame, I'm using Off White. And I'm using a decorative trim. Some of the leftover that I used for the fashion doll that I made. And I'm also going to use the Robert Stanley Collection 3 8 of an inch ribbon. And this color is floral. It's a glittery blue color. And I'm using my J or 6 millimeter crochet hook. And of course you'll need a tapestry needle and a pair of scissors. The first thing I'm going to do is make the backing of the frame for the picture. And you can use whatever color you want. I'm going to use the gray heather. And I'm going to make a slip knot. And to do that, you just fold the yarn over on itself. And then just take your crochet hook and put it right through the loop. And hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb. And then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through that loop for a slip knot. And now you're going to make a chain of seven. So I have my chain of seven. And now you're going to do a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. So one, two, three, fourth chain from the hook. We're going to do a double crochet. So you're going to yarn over. You're going to go into that fourth chain from the hook. You're going to bring up a loop. You have three loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and go through two. And then yarn over and go through two. And then we're going to do a double crochet into the last three stitches on the chain. So you're going to yarn over, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two, and then we're going to do a double crochet in the next two stitches. And now you're going to do another chain of seven. And we're going to do the same thing. You're going to do a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. And then you're going to do a double crochet into the next three stitches on the chain. So in the next stitch over, do a double crochet. And then do a double crochet into the next stitch. And then a double crochet into that last stitch. Now you're going to take and go into that first chain three space that we created. You're going to do a slip stitch. So you go into that space, bring the yarn through the loop on the hook to form a slip stitch. And then your work looks like this. So now we're working in that first chain three space that we created. And you're going to chain three, one, two, three. And that's going to count as your first double crochet. Now you're going to do four more double crochet in that same chain three space.
and this is how your work looks so far. Now you're going to do another chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You're going to do a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. and then one double crochet into the next stitch and one double crochet into the next stitch and then one double crochet into that last stitch now you're going to take your work and turn it so that you have your chain three spaces laddered so you can see how you have your first rectangle and you have your second and your third and now you just made this one that you're going to slip stitch into that chain three space so you're going to take a yarn over and bring the yarn through that chain three space and the loop on your hook for a slip stitch so this is how your work looks now and then you're going to do a chain three one two three and that's going to count as your first double crochet and then you can do four more in that chain three space Then you're going to take and slip stitch into the top of the other chain three space. And you can see how it's forming a ladder up. Then you're going to go ahead and chain three. One, two, three. And then you're going to do four double crochet into that same chain three space. And now you can see how your work is looking. You're forming the steps. Now you're going to go ahead and chain seven again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You're going to make a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. and then you're going to do one double crochet into the last three stitches on that chain and you can see how your work looks now you're going to turn your work like this because we're going to slip stitch into the top of that chain three space and then we're going to work ladder up the ladder so now we're going to go in that chain three space do a slip stitch chain three one two three and then you're going to do four double crochet in that chain three space one two, three, four. Then you're going to slip stitch into that next chain three space on the steps. Chain three. And then you're going to do four double crochet in that chain three space.
and then you're going to do a slip stitch into the top chain three space and then chain three and then do four double crochet into that chain three space and then you can see how your work looks you're making a nice step staircase so now you're going to chain seven one two three four five six seven you're going to do the same thing double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook and then one double crochet into last three stitches on the chain And then I'm going to show you how to do the first part of this and then I'll let you finish on your own. So now you can go ahead and turn your work. And then you're going to do a slip stitch into that first chain three space. And then you're going to chain three one two three and then you're going to do four double crochet into that chain three space one two three and four so you can see how you need to work the pattern so now you're going to slip stitch into the next chain three space and then chain three and work four double crochet and you're going to do that all the way up to the top and then come back now your work should look like this and we're going to go ahead and do another step up so go ahead and do a chain seven and then work it the same way we did before double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook and then one double crochet into the last three stitches on that chain so your work looks like this so far and then you're going to flip the step over and then you're going to work into that chain three space so you're going to go into that chain three space and do a slip stitch just like you did before and then chain three one two three and then you're going to work your four double crochet into that chain three space and then go all the way up the ladder like you did before and then come back when you reach the last step. your work should look like this and now I'm going to show you how to to decrease or step down to complete the back of the frame and then your picture will fit in the frame nicely and you can make this as big as you want you just keep going if you need a bigger frame now you're going to take your crochet work and you're going to flip it so it looks like this and then you're going to start doing slip stitches all the way across the top until you get to the chain three space so you're going to go into the next stitch over you're going to yarn over and take the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch and you're going to do that all the way across the top until you get to the chain three space then you're going to go into the chain three space and you're going to bring the yarn through the chain three space and through the loop on the hook for a slip stitch into that space and then you can turn your work and then you're going to do a chain three one two three and then four double crochet in that chain three space 
One, two, three, and four. So now your work looks like this, and you can see how we're starting to decrease by forming the edges. So now you're going to slip stitch into that chain three space, chain three and four double crochet all the way up, except you're not going to into the last chain three space. You're just going to do a slip stitch and then come back. Now you can see how I laddered up the steps and I'm going to do a slip stitch into that last chain three space. And then once I do the slip stitch into that last chain three space, I'm going to turn my crochet work. And then I'm going to do a slip stitch all the way across the top until I get to the chain three space. And then once you're in the chain three space, do a slip stitch into that space. And then you're going to do the same thing, chain three, four double crochet, slip stitch, chain three, four double crochet all the way to the top. And then in the last chain three space, you're just going to do a slip stitch. Now I've reached the top and I'm going to do my slip stitch into my last chain three space. And then I'm going to turn my work and then I'm going to slip stitch back across until I reach the chain three space. And then you can see how I'm starting to form the edges all the way around. So go ahead and keep doing the steps and laddering and decreasing until you formed your square. Now I have my last rectangle, so I'm going to go ahead and do a slip stitch into that last chain three space. And now you can see how your square is complete. So I'm going to go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through for burying into your work. And then you can see how it makes a nice backing for the picture. And now we're going to do the outer part of the frame. Now you just get the yarn that you're using for the outer part of the frame. And we're going to do a slip knot. So you just kind of fold the yarn over on itself to form a loop. And I'm still using the J or 6 millimeter crochet hook. And then hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb. Then yarn over and pull the yarn through the loop for a slip knot. And now you're just going to make a chain. So you yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for one, two. And you're going to make this chain until it reaches the size of the outer border of your square. Mine ended up being a chain of 80. So I have a chain of 80. And now you're going to, I'm going to do a half double crochet into every stitch back to the beginning. So you're going to hold the last stitch you did with your, middle, your thumb and your middle finger, and then you're going to make a chain two. One, two. That's going to count as your first half double crochet for the next row. And now you're going to do a half double crochet into the stitch that you're holding with your middle finger and thumb. So you're going to yarn over and go into that third stitch chain from the hook and then you're going to bring up a loop you have three loops on the hook yarn over and go through all three for half double crochet and then you're going to do a half double crochet into every stitch all the way back to the beginning so I'm going to do one more with you yarn over go into the next stitch bring up a loop three loops on the hook yarn over and go through all three for a half double crochet so go ahead and do a half double crochet into every stitch all the way back to the beginning. When you finish your last half double crochet, the last stitch, go ahead and yarn over to finish off. And just bring enough yarn through to bury into your work. And 
And then you can go ahead and set this aside. Now you're going to take the backing of your frame and just take your crochet hook into one of the corners and you're just going to bring your gray yarn through or whatever yarn you're using for the backing and then you're going to chain one and then turn it over to tie your knot and then you're going to go ahead and do a chain two one two that's going to count as your first half double crochet and now we're going to do a half double crochet in each stitch all the way around back to the beginning go behind any loose yarn ends to bury them bring up a loop three loops on the hook yarn over and go through all three for a half double crochet and you're just going to do a half double crochet and space them evenly all the way around back to the beginning so go ahead and do your half double crochets when you reach a corner just come back and I'll show you how I do the corner so when I reach the corner I have a double crochet that's on its side so I did two into that side and now I'm going to do two more in the same space to make four and then I can start going across the top so then I'm just going to do that first stitch I'm going to do two half double crochets in that first stitch and then you can go back to one double crochet evenly spaced across the top. And you can just see how it makes the corner just lie. Just make sure your corner lies flat as you work around the corners. And then when you reach the other corner I did a couple extra half double crochets and then I'm going to do a slip stitch into the top stitch of that first half double crochet and then I'm just going to finish off. And then I have my backing all completed and then you can just put your picture frame on there center it to see how it would look and now we're going to do the the frame so you're just going to take the same colored yarn that you did for the outer frame we're going to use that on a tapestry needle so just get some of the same colored yarn on a tapestry needle and we're going to use that yarn to sew on the outer frame now I'm going to take the side that I have my loose yarn end and then just take and lie how you want the yarn to look for the outer frame. If you want it this way, then you would lay it that way. But if you want it to look this way, then you would just lay the yarn out that way. And then just take and tie a knot to your loose yarn end. And then you're going to take your tapestry needle with your yarn and you're just going to go through the stitch, that top stitch of the outer frame that you're using and then the top stitch of the back frame. And just pull your yarn through and leave enough yarn for burying your loose yarn end and then just tie a knot. So it'll be nice and secure. And then you're just going to take your tapestry needle and you're just going to sew the frame on. So you just keep weaving in and out. Until you've sewn the outer frame and you're going to sew it all the way around back to the beginning. If you want the decorative trim you can go ahead and measure how much decorative trim that you're going to need. Measure it all the way around and then go ahead and cut 
the amount that you need. And you can sew your decorative trim on at the same time as you're sewing the, the frame on. So you just take and face it the way that you want. And then mine has two holes that I can fit the tapestry needle through for sewing on. So I'm going to be sewing through those holes. And at the same time, I'm going to be sewing the frame, the front frame on. So I'm going to go through the decorative trim. I'm going to go through both stitches and then I'm sewing it on. And then I'm just going to go in and out. And at the same time, I'm sewing everything into place. And you can see how nice it's going to look. And then I want to come up through those holes. So I'm going to line it up so that happens. So now I'm going to come up. And then it just makes a small stitch. And here is just a close-up so you can see where I'm sewing the stitches in and how nice it looks. After you finish sewing on the border for the frame, go ahead and take any of your loose yarn ends, put them on your tapestry needle, and then on the back of the frame you can just take your tapestry needle and weave it through the back and pull those loose yarn ends through and then cut those so that you can't see them and then come back. Now you just decide which side you want for to be the top part of the frame and then once you've found the side that you want for the top you just put your picture in place and then at the top you can do a little hanging something to hang up your picture so you can use the same color as the outer part of the frame like me. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a slip knot. Just fold the yarn over on itself to form a loop. And I'm still using my J or 6mm crochet hook. And I'm going to do my slip knot. And then I'm going to make a chain of 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then go ahead and finish off, yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. And then you just pull the ends tight so the knots are secure. And then you're going to take the top of your frame, just take your tapestry needle, and then you're going to center where you would like the hanging part to be and then go into the back part of the frame only and then just pull that loose yarn in through it'll sit snugly against the back of the frame and do that for both sides both loose yarn ends and then go in right next to the other side on the back of the frame And then you have a nice hanging loop. And then just tie a knot on the back. And then bury your loose yarn ends. And then I'll show you how to put the ribbon on. Now just measure the amount of ribbon that you'll need for the bottom. And then you're just going to take and bring up the ribbon from the back side. on both sides of the of the picture and 
And then just make sure on the back it's not twisted. And then just measure out the ends so that they're even. And then you can just tie a bow at the bottom. And then you have a nice card for hanging. And this is what it looks like on the back. And this is the other card that I did. And you can see the back is a blue. Here's a close up of the gift bag. And you can see the homemade cards or picture frames. They can be used as picture frames. And the bag can be carried. It's a nice size bag. And then the picture frames can come off or the homemade card. You can hang these up. You can make your own, put your own sayings on them. It's really nice. And then here's the bag. So the bag doubles as a gift bag as well as it can be used as an everyday bag and it opens up and you can fit a lot of stuff inside of it and then here's the back of the bag and then you can see the sides and how pretty the cord looks on the side and it goes all the way on the bottom looks nice on the bottom and then you have the other side so you can do whatever colors you want I did this because the birthday falls on Independence Day, so I did the red, white, and blue colors, but this would make a very nice bag in different colors as well.